Scripture says, make your calling election sure. Examine yourself and see if you're in the faith. And the only criteria is not whether or not you've asked Jesus into your heart. It's whether you've got fruit. Jesus said, by your fruit, you'll be known. The fruit of holiness, the fruit of righteousness. I accept Christ into my heart, and that's all that I need to be able to. Well, no, you've got to repent, turn from all sin. No lying, stealing, adultery, fornication, homosexuality. You've got to turn from all sin. I on my deathbed if I really don't believe that. There's a knife in my back. I've got three minutes to live. I say, Amy, I'm scared of dying. What can I do to be saved? What will you tell me? You ask Jesus Christ to forgive you for all of your sins. Because so what I have to do? Well, God has sent Jesus Christ here to forgive you for all of your sins. He has sacrificed himself. So you're living in holiness? I'm not perfect, honey. I'm just forgiven. So you're not living in holiness? Um, Amy, I'm, I'm concerned for you. I'm concerned I'm not, for your salvation. I'm the furthest thing from perfect, honey. I'm just forgiven. I try to live as according to the Bible as I can. So you're living in holiness? I'm not perfect, honey. I'm just forgiven. I'm not asking if you're living in, if you're perfect. I'm saying, are you living in holiness? Well, holiness would be 100 percent. Like no, it says without holiness, no one shall see the Lord. So what are you going to do if you're not holy? How can you be holy? There are two things you have to do to be saved. You must repent, not just ask Jesus into your heart, but turn from all sin. No more lying, stealing, blasphemy. No more lust. Turn from all sin and live in holiness and trust alone in Jesus. And your life should be evidence of it. You shouldn't, shouldn't let foul words come out of your mouth. You should live in holiness. This is your salvation. There's nothing more important. Make sure you, you live in holiness, you trust in the Savior, and you read your Bible daily. Okay, does this make sense? The judge can let you go just like that. Right. And do what's right and just, because the fight is paid by another. Right. Well, God can let you go. He can let you live forever because of what happened on that cross. Jesus cried out, it is finished. In other words, the debt has been paid. Through his death and resurrection, you can be forgiven every sin, your case can be dismissed, and God can grant you the gift of everlasting life. What you have to do is repent and trust in him who died for the sin of the world and rose again on the third day. Repent of all sins. Stop lusting, lying, stealing from your boss, playing the hypocrite, bad language. Let go of all sin. Trust in Christ alone. Does this make sense? Are you having sex out of marriage? Absolutely. Okay, that's called fornication. Absolutely. So add that to your sins. And the Bible says fornicators are not here in the kingdom of God. So you need to get right with God, marry the lady you love, and have children under God's smile, okay? Alright. You got a Bible? Okay. When did you last read it? Last month. Last month. When did you last read your stuff? About 30 minutes ago. So what's this verse in your life? Did belly or your Bible? Got a it's a man to Calvary, no further. Wherefore, my brethren, you become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should bring forth fruit unto God. We should be married to another and bring forth fruit unto God. We bring forth the fruit of a new lifestyle, a lifestyle that's pleasing in the sight of God, one that is lawful. We don't commit adultery, we don't lie, we don't steal, we don't lust. Why? Because the law has demands on us. The Bible says just asking God for forgiveness won't help you. You've got to repent, turn from your sins, and put your trust in Jesus Christ. Okay? I trust Jesus Christ. You've got to trust in Him and stop sinning. And trust in Him as your Lord and Savior. That means your boss. Now, what you have to do in response to that is repent and trust the Savior. That's Don't just. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's more than that. Repentance is actually a turning from your sins. It's saying, God, I've sinned against you. I'm sorry. I'm not going to sin anymore. No more lying. No more stealing. No more blasphemy. No more lust. You've got to repent and trust the Savior. When are you going to do that? I don't know. When do you think you should do that? I should do it now. What would stop you? I mean, God's offering you everlasting life upon your repentance and faith in Christ. Who in his right mind wouldn't say, whoa, that's a good offer? Well, I don't know what repenting would I have to do to repent. Have you ever said you're sorry to someone that you did something wrong to? Yes. That's all repentance is. You've sinned against God. It's a matter of saying, God, I'm sorry, and then living a lifestyle that proves the reality of your repentance. That's what repentance is. It's a continual thing. God, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to lie or steal or blaspheme your name ever again. It has that attitude. And the second thing, trust in Jesus. It's like you trust a parachute. Yeah. So when do you think you'll get right with God? Very soon. Why not today? Well, I mean, I will. I mean, I could. I don't know. Why don't you? <laughs> I, I, I don't want to force you into it, but I want to say the plane could go down, and this is eternity. This is more serious than a heart attack, so 
get right with God and then let him do the rest. Make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Can I think about this? I, well, I don't need to think about it. I just need to do it, I guess. But I don't even know how to do it. We can pray when I turn the camera on. Okay. Now, do you know how to uh, partake in that gift of salvation? Do you know what you should do? No? Well, if you were on a plane and you knew you had to jump and there was a parachute under the seat, what would you do? I would take the parachute. Put it on. You wouldn't just believe in it, would you? You'd put it on. Yes. That's exactly what you have to do with Jesus. The Bible says put on the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to repent. That is, turn from your sins once and for all and put your faith in Jesus the same way you put your trust in a parachute. So listening to Ray Comfort makes me want to jump off a plane. He couldn't be more confusing with the gospel. First he's telling the guy, uh, you know, do you know that Jesus died for you? The guy's like, yep, yeah, mm-hmm, okay. And then he's like, do you know how to get saved? Uh, no, I don't. And he's like, okay, well, first you've got to stop sinning completely, then trust in Jesus. I mean, this is an oxymoron. It's totally contradicting itself, saying stop sinning and trust in Jesus. So if your stop sinning doesn't work, then I guess you can fall back on Jesus, right? I mean, that's what it sounds like he's telling him. You have to completely stop sinning, which we know nobody can do. I would like to know the day that Ray Comfort stopped sinning. Um, every day he goes out lying to people about what the gospel is. So obviously Ray Comfort is a liar and all, all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. This is the gospel message, and I just pray that you will open your heart and let it change your life. We were fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God to declare his glory and reveal his majesty. The problem is that one of the angels of God wanted to be higher than God himself, and therefore this angel was cast out of heaven, becoming the fallen angel, or as we know him, the devil. One day in the Garden of Eden, there was Adam and Eve, the first humans, and the fallen angel appeared to them in the form of a serpent and tempted them to sin against God, and they did, causing mankind to fall. God was angered and he casted Adam and Eve from the garden and told the serpent that he was going to send one who would crush the serpent's head and the serpent would bruise his heel. You have to understand that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and because of that, we all deserve an eternal separation from God, which is hell. But God loved the world so much that he became man, and that man's name was Jesus Christ. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life by fulfilling all the requirements of the law in order to become the perfect sacrifice for our sins. He was spat on, mocked, and beaten, and people even gambled over his clothes. He was whipped to the point where his flesh was torn from his body and a crown of thorns was crushed into his skull. He was then forced to carry his cross to the site where he would be nailed to it. Jesus then used his last bit of energy after hanging on the cross for several hours to say, it is finished. And then he commended his spirit to the Father. Jesus was then buried, but three days later, he rose from the grave, conquering sin and death. Don't you see? God passed the law that would cause the Jews to sentence his incarnate form to death. The law was the schoolmaster to lead us to Christ and allow us to see our need for a savior. The law was a shadow of good things to come. The promise came before the law. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. This is our Savior. Now, whosoever believes in Jesus Christ as your Savior by trusting in his life, death, burial, and resurrection will be saved. He will take on your sin, and you will take on his imputed righteousness. This is the love of God, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Call out to him today. Confess him as your Lord. When you trust only 
in the blood of Jesus Christ to be your salvation from sin, you will be sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise as a down payment of guarantee of eternal life until the day of deliverance. The Holy Spirit is the seed of God which is planted in you by Jesus Christ through faith in him. This is what allows you to be presented before a holy God as blameless. The Holy Spirit then baptizes you into the body of Christ, making you part of the ecclesia, meaning the church or the called out ones. Your heart will be circumcised and you will be sanctified, meaning you will be set apart from your flesh. We are eternally secure in him because he who begins a good work in us will be faithful to complete it. And daily we will work out our salvation with reverent fear and rejoice and trembling as we conform to the image of Jesus Christ. We become disciples of Jesus and that discipleship journey will look different for everyone. So do not compare yourself to other Christians, but only to Jesus Christ because he is the only standard we strive for. Repent today, that is to turn towards Jesus. Do not let man deceive you into thinking that you must drop all your sins before you come to Jesus. Jesus wants you to come just as you are because he came to call the sinners to repentance, not the righteous. Those who are given to him by God and seek him, he shall in no way cast out. Stop clinging on to the branches of religion and instead come to know the true vine, that is Jesus Christ, because without him, there is no victory, there is no deliverance, and there is no healing. We can do nothing without him. He is our savior from the penalty of sin. He is our savior from the power of sin. And eventually he will be our savior from the presence of sin. He himself took on the penalty of sin your sin, that you would find forgiveness and redemption from your sin today. He desires a relationship with you, and heaven is waiting to rejoice when you turn to him. Receive the free gift of salvation today through faith in Jesus Christ, and enter through the narrow gate that leads to eternal life with your heavenly Father. Amen.